right, we're going to set up the machine to do some single point threading. Um, we are we turned the shaft down to a half inch diameter and uh, standard for half inch coarse threads, 13 threads per inch. Over here, we have, uh, we've already set this up at 13 threads per inch and it's telling us that we need to be in one to one. We also need to be in A. We need to be in number four and the gear category 13 to one. With all that done, we've already turned the neck. This is going to be a place where we're going to exit. And we also need to make sure that our tool is sitting in there straight. We use this tool to grind uh, our tool bit. And we also use it to make sure that we are uh, set straight in there. So 30 degrees off each side of the center. And that is done by doing this. Lines up perfectly. Release that. And we're ready to start machining. First thing we want to do is turn, we're gonna turn the machine on. We're going to go in and touch, touch off on the surface. Switch that off now. I want to set this on zero. This is our cross feed. And we're gonna take all of our settings with our compound. And we also want to make sure that we are on 30 degrees. I know that's showing 60 right there, but it's also showing 90 here. So that means that we're 30 degrees from 90 or 30 degrees from parallel. The bolt calls for 29 and a half to 30 degrees. That extra half a degree is used for clearance. Now if we move this out, back to the beginning. Over on this side is where we're going to have to pick a number and I'm going to lock this in and keep that same number each time. This one only has one number on, I'm gonna grab that number six and we're going to engage it with this lever and we're now machining. Now, now that I'm moving, I'm gonna go in and touch off with the slide, put a little oil on. set. You don't have to worry about uh, picking that same number up each time. It's a little faster method. I switch this off and get a little bit closer to it. Still running in reverse. You have to make sure you don't run into your to your live center here when you do it that way. I'm going back to the same zero point that I had earlier and take another setting. I'm going to take about eight thousandths this time and lock it in and we're in the same groove. Now each time we take a cut we're going to be taking less and less each time because not only are we machining with the tip of that tool we're using the side of the cutter as well. Out real quick, throw it in reverse, squirt a little oil on it for the next cut, get a little closer again. All right, this time I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to disengage it when I get here so I can show you how to pick that number back up. I'm going to go back into my original zero point, take another cut, take probably about seven this time. Disengage the lever this time. This is the lever that I just disengaged. Now the the gear is not connected to an elite screw. So I can switch it off, back this up, and crank it over. Go back to my zero point. Take me another setting, maybe about five or six. 
Now notice where I'm at. I'm, sitting, I'm just about lined up perfect. So as soon as I get to that six on this line, I'm going to engage this lever. speed in, out, right back to the beginning, back to my zero point, turn the machine on, now look, here's where I'm at, six is coming up, and engage it, I just did a dry run that time, just to see if it had any pressure left on the tool, scraping, it cleans the, the tool out of the groove out a little bit every now and then if you do it that way. Disengage it, switch this off, back it up, crank back to the tail stop. This time I'm going to go ahead and make a setting with my compound after I get it on zero and let's go ahead and take about eight thousandths. Should be enough. Switch that on. Six. All right, it's starting to look like a thread now. When it reaches a crest, which is the, the point, we'll start to go back it out and we'll check it with a nut. There's a couple ways of checking the depth of threads. If you have a, a thread mic, you can do it that way. There's another method that's used called the wire system, where you can take three wires, two on the top, one on the bottom, or vice versa and that's of a known size and we can get a measurement that way as well this time we're just going to do it the trial and error way and we should have us a thread here in just a minute consuming thing. Take your time, you'll get you a nice thread. If you rush it, it's going to get broken threads. And the main part, main reason why you would want to single point something, I'm going to disengage this feet this right here so that it won't turn on me, my RPMs. And I'm going to back this out. Keeping everything in place. And we're going to take the nut. There it is. Anyway, try this. Okay, it's starting to just, it's, it's trying to go on a little bit, but it's going to be too tight. So what we do, on the back side of this shaft, it's a good idea if you turn you a, a little uh, diameter first. That way, whenever I tighten up with, with my tail stock, I know I won't be able to press it inside this chuck any farther. Now I'm going to go back up, put a little bit of pressure on the part itself, lock that in place, back this up, we're going to take us another cut or two. We're going to take a cut and we're going to take a dry run. This one I'm going in about six thousandths, get a little oil on it. six for our number, we'll engage it. I think this time I'm just going to leave it engaged like we did at the beginning of the video. Back it out real quick when I get to the groove and throw it in reverse. you throw it in reverse though you will wipe every thread out.
zero. Like I said, without taking anything here, I'm going to make another track. Hello. She's still taking chips out of there. That's the amount of pressure that was still on the tool bit itself. Good fit. It's not too. It's not wobbling around or anything. And that'll do it.